Gay Jinx. Truck stop. JJ Jinx back with another video. This one is dedicated to Gordon. Gordon Ramsey. No. Gordon Freeman. No. Gordon Lightfoot. No. Flash Gordon. No. Gordon Sumner. No. 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 During my road trip, I stayed at a hotel that happened to be right next to a plaza with a harbor freight. This video is dedicated to Gordon Knives. <laughs> that was my clever intro with a little bit of humor. And if you know any Gordons I missed, leave a comment below. <laughs> anyway, yes, Gordon Knives, Gordon Cutlery, whatever they're called. What are they called? Uh. They made a splash recently because of this knife, which is very obviously a copy of the Buck 119. It's a fixed blade knife with a plastic handle. The Buck version says phenolic resin, which is Bakelite. It's good stuff. Anyway, I didn't have any Gordon knives at all in my collection, so I went to town. I bought every single model that Harbor Freight had to offer. <laughs> and I'd like to open them all now and um, see what they're like. In addition to the 119 copy, I've also got this one, which, you know, the first thing I thought of was the Gerber Paraframe. And this one, which, when I first laid my eyes on it, I mean, it's kind of generic looking, but it kind of reminds me of one of the popular SOG models. Well, I don't think this one's made by Gordon, um, but it's the cheapo, big-ass survival knife, or, as they call it, the 8-inch survival knife. Survival slash hunting knife. Yeah, it's got a nice camo background. Bunch of goodies stored in the handle. Um, I don't know who actually makes it. It's distributed by Harbor Freight. Anyway, I got that one. Classic. And I got one of these. Slightly different packaging. Kind of a fancier logo. It stays sharper three times longer. Three times what? I don't know. That's such an ambiguous number. Three times more than a butter knife? Um, well... Well, it's 8CR13 MOV, so... <laughs> and I got this one as well. A whole pile of them. I also got a key knife, but I can't find it. I don't know where it went. Well, I'll start by looking at the 119 copy. Excuse me while I wait for the sirens to go by. There. To open these things, I'm going to use a knife that I got from Wish.com. This just kind of popped up on me. It's a little itty-bitty push-button switchblade knife that has an all-plastic sheath with a clip that has like a little barb there at the bottom. I've actually carried this a few times, and I like it for a few reasons. Number one, it's insanely snappy. Kind of reminds me of the Boker Kalashnikov knives. You know, that mini one? Because it's got that same kind of spring to it where it's got tension all the way until it closes. And the blade is actually pretty sharp, and, um, you know, I tested it on paper against some of my other knives, and it, it's pretty comparable. It's, um, there are no inconsistencies, no chips, no barbs or anything, no rolls. The cut could be a little better, if you see out there at the tip. But the best thing about this knife was the price. It was less than $20. Now, I know what you're thinking. It's a cheap plastic piece of crap, so it better be less than $20. It was actually less than $10. Would I pay $10 for this? Well, I think I would. To have something that's comparable to a Boker Kalishnikov, but at a fraction of the cost, but it wasn't even $10. This was actually less than five bucks. I paid $4.85 for this thing. So anyway, yeah, pretty cool thing. Wish.com, check it out. Let's get to it. Oh, come on, Gordon. 
Oh, the package binked it for me. <laughs> there we have it. Now, fortunately, I don't have a legit Buck 119 to compare this to, um, but I'm sure there are a ton of videos on YouTube comparing them side by side directly. Well, my first impressions are from what a lot of people say about the 119. The handle is thick and full. Um, yeah, it's got a nice, generous choil there for you. Small fuller there. Nice clip point style blade. It feels a little rough, but yeah. For, for, what's that blue shit? Hmm, no idea. But for the price, it's actually pretty good. Just my for my first impressions. I could tell by the feel. This is um, nowhere near full tang. Might be rat tail. I have no idea. But then again, the 119's not a full tang knife either. Uh, the sheath is a synthetic material. It's one of those ones where the snap loops around. Hmm. Well, it ain't going anywhere, but it also rattles a little bit. But that's okay, you know? This is not a, a stealthy weapon. <laughs> so there it is, the Gordon 119 variant. I kind of want to get the 119 now. And in tiny, tiny print, GK21. Gordon Knife 21? Model 21? I don't know. Let's open the next one. Ugh. Might as well get the big ones out of the way. <laughs> oh, my bink is all the way down here. How did that happen? Wow. So I want to say this one was like $10. Wow, it feels really light in the handle. The blade doesn't feel too sharp. I'm resting it right on my finger and it feels fine. <laughs> it's got one of those saw back things. Oh, wow, that is very cold. Well, it is aluminum and my room is cold, so that makes sense. It looks like the blade is held in place by one screw, if that's what that does. I don't know. Pretty simple construction, a pretty classic look. Let's check out the handle stuff. Yeah, compass right inside there. There is a lot of room in here. Can't get my survival package out. There we go. Oh, oh. oh got it finally. <laughs> well, I expected the normal stuff. I've got matches, some different colors of thread. Fishing line. Yeah, it looks like there's a safety pin, a needle, a striker surface. Yeah, and that's that's pretty standard for these cheapo in the handle survival kit type things. Well, at least the compass appears to actually work. Well, long threads. Yeah, it's got that classic knurled pattern with uh, unknurled stripey things in between. Oh, that's all I gotta say about this one. It's huge, and for 10 bucks, it's a lot of knife. But you know you're gonna get what you pay for. <laughs> ah, on to this one. 8CR13 MOV Steel. Now it shows what looks like could be an open assisted type of action, but it just says it folds easily, so I don't expect a spring or anything like that. But we'll find out. I think they would advertise it if that were the case. Very good. Seat belt cutter and a glass breaker. You know what that means. It's tactical. Oh, we're in for quite a treat. The pocket clip has its own bink on it. Double bink for our buck. Bink, bink. This thing is cheap as hell. <laughs> um, very light aluminum scales. Oh, oh, wow, that does not open and close easily. False advertising. Eh. Okay, needs a little bit of wrist action, but the lockup is good. I think it's riding on Teflon. No, I can't, no, that looks like brass in there. Yeah, but it doesn't feel like bearings. <laughs> Doesn't feel very good at all. Maybe it's too tight, I don't know. Or maybe it's just cheap. This one says GK21 as well. So maybe that's not a model number. Maybe that's um, Gordon Knives and then the manufacturing gear. That's what I would guess, because it's definitely a different model from this one. 
It's got a low riding pocket clip, and for their credit, you can reverse it. So, good on you, Gordon. It's got one of those conical glass breakers. And it's not too uncomfortable in the hand. I've definitely held worse. And if you like Tanto blades, this one might be for you. If you like serrations, even more. And it's all blacked out. It's pretty big though, like, you know, dimension-wise. So, that's about on the edge of what I would like to carry in terms of size. And we've got milled out speed lines in the handles. Cool. Next, let's open the Gerber pair of, I mean, the Gordon uh, three inch blade pocket knife. This time it comes in three CR13 steel. Frame lock mechanism and a slim profile design. What the fuck is that noise? And I'm just noticing that in the warnings panel, it tells you to save these warnings. <laughs> Oops, I've been throwing these packages away. You're supposed to wear safety goggles during use, and in order to prevent serious injury, keep away from children. Challenge accepted. Injure yourself in the absence of children. <laughs> oh. Happy days are here indeed. Another double bink knife. Bink, bink. It does resemble the Gerber paraframe. <laughs> oh, we got another GK21 stamp on the blade or ink or and whatever. It's got a dual thumb stud. Um, some kind of brass pivot mechanism again. Yeah, I don't know. Interesting thing about the pocket clip is that the other side of the pivot screw goes through the pocket clip as well. And it's well, not reversible for that matter either. And the screws, which go through the posts, just kind of end on the other side. The lockup looks a little bit far, even for a frame lock. I feel like it shouldn't be that far. Uh-oh. Oh, God. <laughs> it was very, very sticky, and that's very, very slow and tight. Am I living in Detroit now? Centering is not so good, but I think that's just the frame lock, like, shoving the blade to the side. <laughs> Let's see if I get it up past the detent a little bit. Yeah, now it's on center. That's just real tight. Not easy to open, not easy to close, not easy to uh, uh, unlock. <laughs> just like the Gerber paraframe. How about that? Let's see if I can flick it. <laughs> Not really. Oh, God. It's like hurting my thumb. Let's try it with the studs. I can't even open this thing properly. Oh, man. Listen to the sound of it locking up, even. That is tight. Oh, and it is not comfortable closing it either. Look at the indent it left on my thumb. <laughs> well. Very interesting pickup there. I'm very curious about the drop point tactical knife, the Gordon Challenger. So it appears that this one actually was given a name. Very curious what this means. <laughs> We're going back to 8CR13 MOV with an extreme edge. Anything extreme is tactical. Fast deployment. Oh wow, they have a full on diagram of the knife back here. Superior knife grade stainless steel. Knife grade steel. That that's a funny phrase. <laughs> oh, four different belt clip mounting options. That's a nice feature. Let's get this thing open. I am very very curious about this one. Oh, oh I lost the bank. Uh, I'll just put it back on there and pretend it didn't fall off. Hey, look, another bank. Bank. Wow. That is a good texture. Very, very rough. It's like a bunch of, uh, almost like a squished honeycomb texture. Kind of looks like the, the sign to a Hampton Inn. <laughs> you know what I mean? In a hexagonally close packed array. Yeah, we got some detailed contouring going on. This is a comfy knife. 
I like the way that feels, and the blade length isn't too long, isn't too short. This might actually be a pretty good knife. Not into serrations, but still. Hmm. I thought I saw a little bit of a roll on the edge, but I could be wrong about that. It could have just been some gunk. Oh, that closing is, again, pretty rough. <laughs> oh, but at least I can, you know, actuate it a little bit. Eh, maybe it just needs a little bit of breaking in and some grease. The lockup looks good. It's a little bit sticky. That might clear up over time. The fact that you can move the pocket clip is nice, but holy crap, that feels very tight. I think I'd have trouble getting that in and out of the pocket, but some people like a tight pocket clip. Hmm. I could see this really working well if, um, yeah, I guess some of this stuff just needs a little breaking in. It reminds me of something. Oh, you know what? I think I just thought of it. Let's see if I can. Yes, I have it right here. This is the knife it reminds me of the Ozark Trail Tan Flipper 3.0. Okay, so they are a little different, but similar. This one's got an unsquished honeycomb pattern, but the overall shape isn't too far apart. And this one's a little bit bigger and heavier. Also, the Ozark Trail Tan 3.0 Flipper is on bearings. I made a video about this a while back. It's still one of the best knives in the lineup, in my opinion. Better than this one, and cheaper. <laughs> Funny thing, not too long ago, I had a back and forth with somebody on YouTube, and they mentioned that Gordon was making a knife that had ball bearing pivots. And I was like, oh, that sounds great. I'm going to keep my eye out for it. But little did I know, I actually bought it. <laughs> I, I had no idea. I was just grabbing them off the shelf. It was like a shopping spree, except I paid for everything. Um, so this is the... 3.6 inch blade pocket knife, 8CR13 MOV steel, and it says right here, smooth ball bearing pivot point, pivot point, ah, whatever, durable composite handle, liner lock drop point blade, looking at the handsome diagram on the back, oh that's interesting, where it says overall 7 inches, there's like a sticker there, do they not printed at all, or did they print the wrong number? <laughs> hey, check that out. It's eight inch, I mean seven inches long. That's what happened there. <laughs> That's kind of funny. So they just put a sticker with a seven right there. Huh, well the pocket clip can be moved, but how many positions? Looks like all sides. I don't want one position, I want all positions. Let's get in there. Oh, Hephaestus himself has blessed us today. We have another double bink knife. Bink! Bink! My immediate thought was, this area looks a little different. Between the choil and the flipper tab, it kind of looks like a, a, a shark fin sticking out there. That's kind of different. That is also very comfortable. It's not as rough as uh, this one was. Um, it looks like a very, very finely made checkerboarding kind of pattern. So, yeah, not bad. It's got jimping. You know, for bearings, I expected it to be a little smoother, but that's just the out-of-the-box, you know, experience. Wow, that was actually pretty snappy. So with minimal breaking in, this could be a great flipper. Good centering. Dual thumb studs. Yeah, that's good action. It's got a nice swedge to it, so your drop point blade, it's very, very, um, hmm, reminiscent of, I kind of feel like this is something Cold Steel would make, you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, this pocket clip is the same as the one on this, but it's, it's, it's a little bit looser, it's a little bit less tight. I can actually move this one. This one? No. <laughs> So this one is the fidgetiest amongst the collection. And the lockup is good. Not sticky at all. Good. Good knife. So there you have it. The I went from owning zero Gordon knives to 
all of these. I don't know if it's the full collection or not, uh, but I am going to look in on that because if there's more that I'm missing, I kind of want them now. <laughs> well, obviously my favorite of the bunch is the one with bearings. Very smooth. Is it drop shuttable? It is. Very nice. Sub five dollar wish dot com Kalashnikov equivalent <laughs> did a fine job cutting its way through all that plastic. Now I just have to make a video of all the non Harbor Freight shit that I picked up on my road trip. <laughs> but that is for another day. Until then, this has been JJ Jinx. Truck stop. Games!